You're listening to SOJC Radio, preaching the gospel of the kingdom and teaching the doctrine of Christ to the whole world. Good morning and welcome to SOJC Radio Church. Grab your Bible and your pens and your paper and when two or three are gathered in his name, the Lord is right here with us. So thank you for joining us and here's Brother David. Good evening. It's not morning, but it's evening. But we're here anyway, thank God. And it's want to welcome everyone to this January 2nd, 2017 special broadcast here on FOJC Radio. want to welcome all of our new listeners and all of our old listeners and everyone that's joining us for this very important topic tonight. Our broadcast tonight is going to be enemy arsenal targeting and our power to overcome with Julia Thompson and this is a topic that I am so pleased to be able to address tonight and I am so pleased to be able to address it with such an articulate and brave young lady as Miss Julia Thompson and Julia I just want to welcome you to FOJC Radio. Thank you, Brother David. It's an honor and a privilege to be here with you. And Julia, how did you hear about FOJC Radio? I heard about your ministry when I was watching an interview you did with Tim Alberino on Mind Control Technologies. Mm -hmm. And that's how I learned about you. And then I looked at your website and I thought, "I I need to talk to this man. And the show I did with Timothy Alberino was my first serious look into the technology that makes this type of uh, stuff capable. I've heard a little bit, you know, here and there, of course, you know, bits, but the first time I seriously addressed it in a broadcast, and we've dealt with SRA for about three decades here at uh, FOJC, and we are now getting as many contacts from TIs as we are SRA folks. So I am so thankful that you're able to help us tonight. But what is this phenomenon of targeting innocent citizens with electronic weapons? And is this stuff really real? Well, um, Brother David, if it's okay, I'd like to uh, say a word first before I answer your question to the targeted individuals. Um, Number one, I know the feeling of being isolated and alone and having people think you're crazy. And I I felt so strongly in my heart that God, I mean, he instructed me that before I said a word, that I was to address those who are targeted, that God loves them, that he has never taken his eyes off of them. He cares deeply for them. And any feelings of abandonment are not from him. And he has never abandoned even one of you. So that's the first thing I have to say to the targeted people. And my prayer is that you will be encouraged by the things that the Holy Spirit's been teaching me. And it's definitely been a journey. There's been a lot of battles. But I can tell you, we are created, those of us who have been born again and who are walking with Jesus Christ, we are destined to overcome. This is this is just a it's a bigger bump in the road probably than most of you have ever known, but there is power to overcome through Jesus Christ. Amen. And and to those um, who are listening, who are who monitor me or who monitor other TIs, I have no doubt that you're listening. And um, I just want to speak a word to you that just as I do almost every day of my life, I pray for those who. Um, who use these weapons against innocent citizens. I don't hold anything against you. I I forgive. I choose to live in forgiveness because that's what my father requires. And and it's it's what I want. And, And I pray for those who do not have the eyes maybe to see the harm and the damage that you've caused others. Um, uh, I pray that you will know the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ and, um, and then for those who who have heard about targeting but don't understand it and have no experience with it, I I know this is a lot of this is going to sound like science fiction. It's it's very hard to understand. This is technology that is not what we are the average person is familiar with. 
And I just ask that you would reserve judgment against those who you hear that are targeted and, um, you know, you can't understand them. It's understandable that, that, um, that you would reject some of the testimony you hear from people, but, but I'm asking you to be open because this affects you too. This is actually a global a global crisis. This is not just uh, you know a small percentage of people. This is a global crisis because everything that's done to a targeted individual is intended for the entire population of the world. And I thank you. So in answer to your question, yes, this is real. And a targeted individual is someone who's on a government re-education or silent assassination, which is also known as a soft or slow kill list. And um, EMF targeting was first used in the 70s for spies on the field, and then uh, the CIA incorporated it into a mind control program called MK Ultra. But now it's directed to innocent people in their homes. And um, let's see, I'm not sure how. There's so much to say about this, and. Uh, I'll just tell you first of all, this the phenomenon of targeting is um, there are times when they the purpose is to see if they can, the main purpose, I'll tell you the main purpose is ultimately for mind control. That is the bottom line of targeting a person. And it's a psychological warfare. These are military weapons that are used on citizens. Okay, and... Um, they have there's different reasons why they target people one of the reasons is for experiments to experiment to see uh, what it takes to modify the behavior of the human mind and also it's for genetic research so it's experimentation research and development and but I the main thing is for the purpose of mind control okay the other the other reason they do it is well, there's, if you are someone who works in the government and you have too much information or you have defected from what you deem to be a illegal program, um, many of those people, like William Benny, he's been targeted. He left the NSA when he realized what, his, um, what all of his developments, he's a very intelligent man, he had 40 years in the intelligence agency. And when he saw what was being done with the programs he had developed, he left and he is now targeted. So um, it can be a political figure or someone that they deem as a threat. Um, also, activists are targeted. People who are, um, let's see. Well, if you, if you are considered a political dissident, which is, I'm hesitating because uh, right now that's a very loose term. People that, yeah, you know, no. can be considered a political dissident that are, you know, evangelical Christians. <laughs> right. We have actually, that's on the one of the top on the list of potential domestic terrorists. So um, if you're a political dissident or an activist, uh, they will use uh, targeting to suppress you, and it's torture-based. And basically, this is to retard societal progress. Um, it's especially spiritually and scientifically. People like musicians, artists, scientists, inventors, researchers, filmmakers, uh, basically free-thinking individuals, critical-thinking individuals. They don't just go along with the flow. And basically, it's people who are not easily mind-controlled or easily controlled. And it seems to me from some of the calls that we're getting that people are just being picked at random just for the purpose of them like lab rats just so they can see just what they can do you know it just seems to me brother david that's exactly right because for experimentation purposes they will commonly use poor and unknown people those who live alone um they especially are use educated single women they make up about 70 percent is what i've heard um but yes this this is not there's not just one category uh when you're experimenting with people you know, they, they try to cover a large strata of society, but um, it does seem like they particularly focus on people that are alone. And it does seem like they're just testing their capabilities. They're testing 
how that people will react to this, what they can do, and also the reaction of the public at large to people that make these claims. And why do you believe there are there's so much skepticism in regard to this electronic mind control? Well, one of the reasons for the skepticism is because the the public is not most people are not aware of the level of sophisticated technology that's that's actually you know being used um you know the average person does not know about military weapons we don't typically deal with that um and so when a ti tries to explain what they're going through it it sounds more like a science fiction movie and also to be quite honest with you for TIs, it can be very difficult to articulate their experience. Most of their minds are so disrupted and the capability of thought is compromised. And, you know, of course, society has been conditioned to believe that people who make these claims are crazy, um, just like conspiracy theorists are placed in the same category. But this is actually the intention, and this has been carefully planned to hide secret activities from basically 98% of the public. And I'm taking that from... Um, as a from information that I received from a man named Robert Dr. Robert Duncan who worked on the system of remote neural monitoring with the CIA and he like William Benny when he saw what was being done with his developments he his conscience would not allow him to continue so um, and the Pentagon released a paper stating that they could falsely imprison up to 1.6 of a population without a successful revolution due to the rest of the public public excuse me having no sympathy for the cause so right now they can basically um, use about 1.6 percent of the people that could be put in they can put them in secret mind control prisons which is what this is actually is and there are many ways to propagandize and deceive those who have not experienced the true nature of this program and according to the CIA documents we're all human animals and that's what Dr. Robert Duncan has stated. And I have to admit that I was skeptical, too. And a lot of these stories can really stretch you out. And like you say, <laughs> yes. these people have been terribly hurt. They've been brutalized. They've had their minds messed with, quite literally. And I see kind of the same curve that I went through, that I went through with satanic ritual abuse when I first encountered it in the late 80s. And the stories that these people were telling were so unbelievable. They were so over the top. But after a while of hearing so many credible, sincere individuals from all over the world telling me these same stories, I came to the point where I I had to believe and I see myself going through the same kind of a learning curve with the TIs they're just absolutely over the top stories that you've got every reason to disbelieve but when you <laughs> yes, hear so true. many that's stories true. from so many sincere people many of them believers that are sincere believers in our Lord yes. I have come to the place where I now firmly believe and after you study the technology and the capabilities that these people have and when you study the people that are, de that are developing these technologies I have come to the place where I firmly believe this is going on and what we're doing tonight we're just not telling people there's a problem you know we know there's a problem but we're wanting to offer hope and we're yes. wanting to begin to come together as the body of Christ to find solutions to find answers and to refuse to be the devil's punching bag and to just lay down for this type of stuff but we're going to fight back in the power of the spirit and we're going to come together as the body of Christ to find solutions and that's what I like about you you not only can articulate what the problem is but we can offer hope and solutions tonight and that's why I am so thankful to have you to be able to speak to this tonight thank you brother David I have absolutely um, you know, <laughs> I have to say, I don't know where to begin because um, when I see where I was in the beginning of this to where I've come, I love God more than I ever have. And I, I'm 30 years with the Lord. 
And I thought I, I thought I loved him. I thought I knew him. But um, I have, through this experience, I've developed a relationship with him. And, um, you know, I had some moments where I, I thought he was absolutely had walked out of my life and totally disappeared. <laughs> I, I thought he hated me. But when I, as I searched and I pressed through, and this is what I want to encourage the believers that are going through this about, that as you really find, as you really dig and you find out the truth and you get alone with God and you get into his word, um, he does have a way through this. He really does. Because we are destined to overcome. Now, what do you say to people that say, you know, Julia, you're just fear-mongering. You're just going to scare everybody. You're promoting fear, not faith. What are you going to say to them? Well, you know, Brother David, for a long time, I, I did keep quiet about it because that's exactly what people said. People in the body of Christ said that. And, um, of course, you know, people that, that don't know the Lord, they just, you know, look at you funny. <laughs> So, um, but when a person is a TI, especially in the early stages, you know, you're just desperate for someone to understand and you feel a need to, to tell people because, uh, you know, it, it's, it's so extreme, the torment and the suffering. But um, what I say now is, you know, I, I mean, I, I don't force this on people. But if they seem, if there seems to be an opening, I do share, and I, I feel like as believers, we absolutely need to know about this because, as the church, we are the ambassadors of Jesus Christ. We have been given authority over the works of darkness, and we have an obligation to pray for the welfare not not just of ourselves. It's not just about me and my little house and my family, and it's about others. It's about our entire nation. It's about you know the world because. Jesus said, he said to be wise as a serpent, harmless as a dove. Uh, we are a nation originally founded upon Judeo-Christian biblical principles. And there is nothing, I'll tell you, there's nothing Satan fears more than a church that is alert and walking in her inheritance of power and dominion over evil. You better believe it. And just because we choose to ignore something doesn't mean it's going to go away. And just well, because right. we refuse yeah. to believe in something doesn't mean it cannot hurt us. And from the study that I've done into the technology of the elf waves and the microwaves and the cell towers and all of these technologies that they're using, I don't believe that there are very many citizens in the United States that are not affected by this by some degree. Well, actually, you know, I was listening to William Benny today on an interview he did, and uh, number one, uh, the entire global population, at least here in the United States, because our intelligence agencies are the backbone of this whole new wor world order system of control. And here in the United States, he was saying, we have been under surveillance for so long, and they are aware of a lot more than what the average person thinks they know. And, uh, you know, a lot of people say, well, what do I care if the government watches me? I don't care if they're surveilling me or checking my emails. Well, I don't either. I have nothing to hide. But it's the idea of the insidious agenda behind it, which is to literally control the minds of individuals. And when you have no concept of the, of the, um, the technology that's behind that and what, how, what they can use, uh, then you're just basically waiting for it to hit you in the face. And, and I don't believe, in fact, I'm going to tell you, Brother David, I have to say this. Um, when this first started happening to me that I was aware of, it was in, uh, this was an August day, actually. I finally, I, I actually became aware of it in August of 2014. And I came home from a, a, a prayer meeting, Bible study, and I heard the Holy Spirit in my heart say, you need to read Ezekiel 33. And I didn't know what it was, and I looked it up, and um, and it kind of frightened me, actually, because I thought, how could I tell anybody about this? And, you know, Ezekiel 33 says, if you do not warn people, then their blood is on your hands. And, you know, I, I, I tried for some time to warn people and to tell them that this was happening and that it was real. And... And I experienced so much rejection, I stopped for a while. I said, God, you're going to have to, yeah. you know, you're going to have to direct me. And he, he let me know that it, it, I was a little bit premature. 
because until I can offer solutions or until I was able to, to you know, learn, get some things under my belt, some truth under my belt, I really wasn't prepared to share. But, you know, he, he tells us if, that if we, as watchmen, I didn't know, but apparently by going through this, I have become a sort of watchman. And if I didn't share it, then I would be in disobedience to God and responsible for other people's harm. So that's why I'm sharing. And as a ministry, we feel a burden and we feel a responsibility to do what we can. And it's a difficult it's field. Let me tell you, it's difficult. Yes. And for a long time, and I don't want to minimize prayer, but, you know, we'll say, well, we'll pray for you. Well, that's fine. Prayer's great. But we need to do more than that. We need to develop specific strategies and begin to work together and find people like yourself that have found solutions, lift them up, give them a platform, learn these strategies, begin to support one another. And these are the beginnings of the body of Christ coming together yes. to kick back on this evil agenda. And I, I think that uh, we could even see scenarios and of course we're getting conspiratorial but knowing these people and what they're doing they're doing mind control and you know they could even use this for assassinations they could use it for all kinds of things you know we could be talking about an electronic armageddon here with the literally the technological capabilities that they now possess it could be a very very ugly uh, scenario that these people could use this for and you just wonder with what they're doing if they're not now testing out what they can do to see what their capabilities would be in that type of a scenario yes and, and many people have died this way by electronic warfare and uh, I read a statistic one time that said that uh, a large percentage of targeted individuals die within six months of being targeted now, I don't know that that is necessarily from, uh, in fact, I do remember it was, it was because they committed suicide. And so it, it isn't, they can, they can definitely, they can cause heart attacks, they can uh, affect the blood pressure, they can, uh, by, now this is by frequencies and microwaves, and this is all through the electromagnetic field, okay, and how it reacts to the body. So they, they can do, uh, they can change hormones in the body. Um, microwaves cause cancer. And you know the video I sent you that shows, that's a perfect example of what microwaves do to the red blood cells. They cause them to stack. That's called Rouleau. And that means that there's, uh, you don't have nutrients and oxygen going in and out of your blood. Your blood can't expel, you know, toxins as well. So, uh, I mean, this is, it's very serious. And when I saw that video that you sent about the provable, visible change in your blood, it yeah. makes me think of the many things that I've studied about the transhumanist agenda with life being in the blood and the, the sons of God and the daughters of men and the Nephilim of the genetic change that... Yes they desire to bring about that this could even be experiments in uh, that are going right along with genetic manipulation it seems to be right going the same direction and I didn't see a connection at first but after seeing that video of your blood that was actually visibly physically altered you know yes. I can see a big connect here in this total agenda of what yes. they're doing I'm sorry, Brother David. Go yes, right you're right, because, see, this is moving, this is towards transhumanism. A lot of people say, well, transhumanism is coming. No, it's already here. <laughs> it's it's already happening. Um, we um, have GMOs in our food. We have, uh, you know, the chemtrails that we're breathing. Those particles of aluminum that are in chemtrails, among other horrendous things, um, are actually making us transmitters. And, you know, aluminum does not pass through the blood-brain barrier. It, uh, it stays in your system. So we're, we're transmitters for uh, frequencies to be sent to us, and we are also, um, you know, getting Alzheimer's, and, all, and there's a host of respiratory illnesses that have occurred that many people think are from chemtrails. But the whole thing is to 
alter our DNA. And um, when I saw my blood, I, I, you know, if I did not trust in God, <laughs> I was I was pretty horrified at first. Because there, for anybody that looks at it, um, if you ever look at it, it's one thing to have your blood cell stack that can be remedied. But when you have in the in the background of my blood, there were these fibers, and oftentimes when I bleed, I bleed with fibers coming out of my blood, and wow. and uh, this is real. And and then the other thing in the foreground of that um, dark field microscopy was little tadpole-like parasites. And um, I'm preparing to have a, a thorough workup, but it's it's costly. You know, it's going to be costly. Now, I this is something that the fibers and and you know, the more I hear about and learn about this, the more that I realize that I have seen this stuff in the past, and I just haven't realized what it was. And I see a real overlap between SRA and. Uh, uh, the TIs and when you talked about these fibers coming out what were these fibers like can you help us here a little bit uh, yes I can um, oh it's happened so many times now I've lost count but one of the things that I used to ex- that I, I still experience it um, on occasion but I would wake up and I would have these like puncture. They would be two two marks about a quarter of an inch apart on my, you know, various areas of my body, on my arms, on my chest. And it would be like an overnight thing because I didn't have it the night before or the day before. And I'd wake up and have these puncture wounds. And at first I thought maybe it was some kind of a bug in my house. I thought, you know, maybe my dogs have fleas. I didn't know what it was. But, um... I would notice then that I would start feeling pain in that area if I just, you know, let it go. And usually they take it takes a while to heal and it, you know, hurts and it kind of itches then as it heals, which is normal. But but anyway, so what I started doing was actually soaking when I would spine these wounds, I would I started soaking with compresses of baking soda and water because baking soda has a drawing effect, tends to draw out things. And for whatever reason, it draws out these fibers. And so I would actually see, and I have pictures, I I have some videos even, of pulling these fibers out, and they move. <laughs> they move like a sensor. Wow. Um, yeah. They Now, I don't have a, a microscope. I just This is just with a magnifying glass. So that tells you they're big enough, at least, that I can see it with a magnifying glass. And sometimes they're red, sometimes they're blue, sometimes they're black, Um Sometimes there's like a little, a little tiny, um, you know, it's just a, <laughs> a pinpoint size of a little black speck um, that comes out. And uh, another thing I've done is I've put magnets. Oh, I had one time where, this was just, I don't know, a month or so ago, I had a wound on the side of my head behind my ear, and I kept rubbing a magnet on it, and it, the more I did, the more it hurt. And I'm telling you, Brother David, this is this is truth before God. When I looked at the magnet, there were chunks of what looked like little specks of I don't I don't know what it was, black stuff coming out of my out of this this wound in my head. <laughs> and then I would see these fibers, and they stick straight straight up with the magnet. So you know, magnets and and uh, I mean, it sounds absolutely crazy. But I finally had to say, okay, God, I can't, I, I just, I can't, I can't pull everything out. And when I've taken baths, this is another thing, and I highly recommend this for any targeted people. Actually, I actually recommend it for anyone to soak in as hot a water as you can with plenty of baking soda. One time I did this and all these fibers came out. I mean, it, they, they always come out in the bath, but it was particularly extreme. And then usually there's these chunks of, uh, of it looks like iron chunks, little tiny iron chunks, and um, and also specks of gold. <laughs> so I have no idea how that happens, but these specks of metal will come out of my skin. So wow. if that gives you some idea, there is um, a very creepy agenda. See, this is this is about changing the human makeup. 
Let me just throw this at you. And okay. um, I mean, this just is, uh, and I've seen similar things. I really have. And I've just struggled, and Donna has also, and we've just struggled to make sense with it. And in the book of Enoch, chapter 44, it says, And I saw another thing regarding lightning, how some stars arise and become lightning and cannot dwell with the rest. And the book of Enoch, which I personally put a lot of stock in, it talks about some of the fallen powers that they took the form of lightning and were not allowed to regain their former state. And could it be possible that some of these electronic waves that people are being hit with are actually fallen powers themselves and could it be that these electronic beams are even channels for these spirits to ride and you know it could this be possibly a combination of a spiritual electronic attack well brother david yes it is it is a spiritual it, this is all rooted in the occult it's rooted in uh, i believe satan's agenda to dominate mankind now the only thing that i don't uh, you mentioned you said uh our spirits operating through the like through the waves or through the microwaves is that what you mean yeah literally yeah. and could okay. actually uh some of these beams that are actually being transmitted could actually be spirits themselves in the form of electricity uh, just as it said that there were some and you know the Bible says Jesus said I saw Satan fall from heaven like lightning and we might even be dealing with a more direct spiritual aspect than we might have believed and uh it's amazing how that the actual bombardment of individuals with whatever this is is actually causing a metallic residue that's tangible within the individuals yes and um, I, I don't know about spirits being behind behind the actual um, physical attacks that occur and the just a little bit of background a microwave microwaves are used a lot in this targeting situation and what they are is they're directed energy and uh, where you know conventional the, historically wars were fought with guns and ammunition and um, with kinetic weapons okay now the military uses electromagnetic weapons okay so what I, I personally believe is that Satan, just like it says in the book of Enoch, since you referred to that, that uh, that's one of my favorite books too. Um, the fallen angels taught, one of the angels, his job was to teach methods of warfare. And what I believe is that part of Satan's agenda is to teach methods of war that are undetectable. Because that's, that's one of the most um, specific things about this type of warfare is that it's not traceable and it's undetectable. You can only see the result of it. So I, I believe that Satan, in the end times, this is he is developing his uh, his <laughs> his army that will rise up against Jesus Christ, and well, first of all, will dominate and control mankind, and um, then will actually go to war. You know, just like it says in Re Revelations, when Jesus returns and and the church comes with him, so I these they are they are completely demonic. In fact, I'll, I want to read something to you. This is a weapon, okay? This is a this is a weapon currently in operation in the United States, okay? It's called Satan. S A T A N is the acronym, and it's this is from Robert Duncan's book. It's an above top secret mind control system that's used worldwide for eugenics of so-called dissidents. It stands for silent assassination through adaptive neural networks. Okay, and he, he actually calls this electronic demon possession. Wow. So I believe that to facilitate, because there are, you know, what, 6.57 billion people in the world, for Satan to facilitate his plan on the earth, 
he has he is he has men that have totally given themselves over to this and are implementing especially men with great deals great amounts of money the globalists the new world order uh, people with it's it's in you know with great amounts of money they are pouring all of their resources into this technology for world domination so it is satanic and it is rooted in the occult but they are using uh, I'm just saying this because to a targeted person um, if you if you just tell them that this is nothing but demonic then they start feeling like well what's wrong with me because I've resisted I've right. I've prayed I've stood right. against it and it's not stopping see it's because they're using technology and it's it requires more knowledge it's still defeatable, I believe, but it requires more knowledge than just your typical, you know, attack from a demon. Right, and we don't say that to demean anybody. Right, yeah, I you know, know you don't. But we're, we're just kind of thinking out loud here to try to come up with strategies and solutions because I think they're probably, once we, and there's definitely a physical aspect to it, and it's a, uh, perhaps the best way that we might wind up eventually understanding it is that it's a physical plus a spiritual problem and uh, this will help us to move towards some solutions and how long do you think this how long has this been going on do you think when did this begin and uh, when you know we always say they are doing this. They are doing that. Who are they? You know Who are I mean? they? Who really okay. makes the decision? They yeah, is, there's is somebody actually, over here. Um, We're going to Now, I, I'm, I'm telling you, these are, these are not my suppositions, okay? I've done some study on this, and one of the best sources I know of um, is someone who's been in, in this. And this Dr. Robert Duncan is an ex-CIA agent. Like I said, he worked on uh, remote neural monitoring technology. He just thought it would be used, you know, against in times of war. Okay, so uh, they is actually, it's, it's actually the government. Okay, it is the intelligence agencies. This is why William Benny left because um, back in, well, back in the 19, in ni- around 1975, it was discovered that uh, the intelligence agencies were were using that they were mining data from individuals, and they were actually um, reprimanded for doing that. And supposedly that stopped, but it, it apparently <laughs> it took it, it did it actually continued. And in 2000, that's when he left the NSA because they are really the backbone of um, of this whole world domination. Uh, we have the most sophisticated weaponry in all the world. We have the most sophisticated mind control technology. And the, just to give you a little bit of background, um, after World War II, when Hitler, you know, after the war was over, after they lost, our government brought over approximately 2,000 neuroscientists from Germany. They were anonymous. They were... Um, they were not charged with war crimes, which they should have been, and they took residence in our government agencies to facilitate this study of mind control and what it took to modify human behavior. Okay, but the, the very first forms of mind control started in 1939 under something called Bluebird, and then there were a couple other programs, but the in the, in the 50s when... Um, when the scientists from Germany came, it was, oh, let's see, I don't know the exact year they came, but they, the most well-known program that they started was Project Paperclip, okay, and that was where they started testing people for what did it take to, to control the mind. And originally they would use things like electrodes, and they would put them in the mind, and, and like of animals, and Jose Delgado was a very well-known scientist who, um, he, he has a, a famous experiment that he did on a bull where he put electrodes in the brain and he was able to literally switch with a radio transmitter. He switched the frequencies, he switched the, uh, something in the brain of where this electrode was placed in this bull and he actually stopped him before he approached the matador. 
Yeah, so, that's interesting uh, to me. That was developed at Yale. They're the whole the home of skull and bones. No coincidence. Uh-huh. I don't believe. Yeah, and then it, but the actual targeting of citizens. To answer your question, I'm sorry, I got a little off track there, but you're not the off track at all. You just uh, it was about the 1960s, about mid 1960s is, w- is when they first started targeting people, and um, that's when they began to use um, military weapons, and um, you know that's the at least that's the first record of it occurring. Some people have actually lived for you know many many years as targeted individuals. So, um, but that's when it started. And I I forgot what else you asked me. I'm sorry. Well, let's just say there's somebody tonight that's listening or that will hear this broadcast in one of the many venues it will be presented on. And we will be uploading this on our YouTube channel. Uh, There's a link uh, here on our website that you can go to our YouTube channel and we'll be uploading this broadcast there for people to rewatch or new listeners to watch but let's say there's someone listening that is being targeted by this type of harassment what can they do if anything to practically in the physical realm shield themselves from this type of an attack well i don't know of anything that they can specifically do to shield themselves i mean i i people try different things that was one of my first mistakes I made was I spent a great deal of money trying to I bought a frequency generator that supposedly would <laughs> push the frequency push things away and it worked for about uh, you know three four days and um, there is something called link stat that some people have found some help with there's some there are some these are just some physical things you can do there's um, some people have used um, aluminum blankets you know like the space blanket and and ground it and they've gotten a little bit of relief I mean it, to be quite honest with you brother David there really isn't a way to shield from this um, you can sometimes a certain kind of uh, rubber material that's very strong um, you know can I mean I'm thinking about myself one day I literally was laying on my bathroom floor covered in rubber mats <laughs> to try to shield myself I tried everything I mean I tried the foil I tried um, it, it's it was horrific nothing that I found actually shielded myself but um, I'll tell you I'll tell you what made the difference is when I stopped trying to fight it and I stood up and I said, okay, what am I going to do spiritually? Because I'm not going to be defeated. My God is greater and he is stronger. So I, I have to say what I would recommend to people is rather than trying to find a way to physically shield yourself is to get, first of all, get a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. Decide whether or not you know you, you want to go his way because he has, he has the answers and he has the ability and um, so the first thing would be to make a decision for Jesus Christ to be born again second thing is you've got to realize that this this is a war on the mind now that actually is one thing that would help people if they understand that this is psychological warfare all the physical torment as bad as it is the physical uh, attacks they really are for the purpose of modifying the mind this is what MK Ultra was it's trauma based mind control and this is something that the CIA developed and um, the idea is to fracture the human personality to where they they uh, they go through all these different things to suppress it, I don't fully understand uh, dissociative you know order or you know what it is yeah, the ID uh, uh-huh. yeah DID anyway or, I, I don't fully understand it but The idea is to keep the person, cause them to be in such a state of mental distress that they, um, it opens, it opens your your mind to be controlled. And then they'll try to do a reward and punishment thing. Like if you start to go one direction, they'll hit you with pain. You start to go another direction that that doesn't uh, go against the program and, or, you know, uh, it's hard to explain. I'll, I'll give you an example. Okay, when I would go to church, I lead worship at different churches. When I would go to church, I would be so horribly attacked. 
And, you know, now if I were going to be controlled, I would say, oh, I think I'll stop going to church. I think I'll just stop reading my Bible because they don't like that either. They don't like it that I worship. Uh, they don't like me going out and preaching the gospel at senior citizen centers. Okay, so that's, I mean, if, if you want to go that route, if you just do what they want you to do, they'll probably back off. But, um, but to, you know, I'm, I'm really sorry that I cannot say there are physical things that you can do. I will tell you this. Based on Robert Duncan's book, he said that typically for a targeted person, the, the worst attacks physically are the first few years. And then they tend to back off of that. Now, this is a system that is supposedly for life. Can you imagine that? Yeah. It's... Life being tormented. And that means your money is, they try to get you to run through all your money. Um, they try to get you sick, so you run to doctors and have to spend all kinds of money on medical bills. My utilities are outrageous because of the heat that I experience. Um, you know, all these, in other words, it's, it, it's many faceted. Okay. But uh, what he said is that after about three years of a lot of physical torture, then, the, then they just focus on the mind. But my thinking is, and he doesn't, he does not, this book is called How to Tame a Demon, but he, I don't believe in taming him, I believe in overcoming him. Yes, amen. Cast him out. Yes. So that's, and that's what, that's what this whole thing is about. I, I really felt like God did not want me to speak publicly until I could start offering spiritual solutions. And that's the, that's really the best I can do. Now there are, for people who have physical effects now that they're dealing with from being targeted, and one of the physical effects is a buildup of toxins in your body. Um, I have a friend who, he has a website called Citizens, and then it's AHT.org. It's against Citizens Against Harmful Technology.org. And he is developing um, ion generators that will draw toxins out of your body. And uh, he's working also on frequencies through the Rife machine that will possibly get rid of some of these parasites that develop in us so um, there are things in the works and the, and people are working on the development of shielding but unless you can build an extremely expensive Faraday cage there really isn't any shielding for this and one of the commonalities between satanic ritual abuse and uh, electronic mind control is that these are both technologies that came out of Operation Paperclip that came out of Germany and there's such a connection with the occult and yes many people know the um, the German scientists that came over that went into NASA uh, were connected with Jack Parsons who was one of the leading uh, proponents in developing rocket fuel for NASA and he was a member of the Pasadena OTO with Aleister Crowley and they all uh -huh. Hubbard of Scientology and they're the same technology developed by Dr. Mengele in the death camps of Germany was brought to, uh, uh, to play and there are government agencies and cults that are so sophisticated that through repeatedly induced trauma they mm -hmm. can split a person's personality to where they can control them and cause them to do things that they will later be unaware of. And yes. This seems almost like a move from disassociative mind control to yes. whole mind mind control to doing the same thing to an individual without splitting the personality it's like this is the next step in technology and in mind control yes it is and you know um, you just reminded me one of the one of the other reasons that they target an individual is to see if they can turn them into a Manchurian candidate, mm -hmm. which, you know, is someone who can assassinate by, well, they've been, you know, hypnotized and mind-controlled and probably, you know, fractured. Um, and they, they will actually go and carry out an assassination or they will, um, you know, deliver a message to someone. I mean, these are, it's typically for assassination, but they can also... Uh, spy and uh, you know deliver sensitive information and then completely have their their mind wiped clean so that they don't remember it 
And so that is one of the other reasons that they do this to to people is to see if they can turn them into that sort of person. And then, of course, that leads to, you know, if you have someone that is capable of killing and rage, then then you have uh, <laughs> more effort to control our guns. And I mean, it, it's it's like a scenario of just how much havoc can we wreak on society? How much damage can we do to individuals um, in order to bring about this? Which is, you know, the new world order. This is what they, how they believe that you, that that you create chaos and then you provide a solution for it. Yeah, order out of chaos. This yes. is their goal and this is their game plan. And in Second Corinthians ten and five, it says, "Casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalteth itself against the knowledge of God, and bringing into captivity every thought." To the obedience of Christ. Yes. Have you found that even though you are being electronically assaulted, that you are able through the cross to control your mind and bring it back in focus upon the Lord? Yes, absolutely. Now, in the beginning, I will tell you, Brother David, um, I, I noticed... Um, let me just say this before I answer that. One of the things that I that the Lord showed me early on in this targeting situation was that everything they did against me, he he, he encouraged me to not get to not react to everything and get upset because I was going to learn through everything I experienced. So I have learned a lot, and one of the things I learned um, was that when you are um, attacked with an emotion that is not native to your character, it's very easy to uh, to recognize. <laughs> and one of the things, I, I remember one day waking up in particular, and I was so depressed. It was completely unnatural. It was, I mean, of course, you know, this situation can make a person feel like life is hopeless. But this was, this was unnatural. It was extreme. And I, what I had to learn is that I started speaking to my mind and I would say no we're not going to think this way this is not this is not who I am and the Holy Spirit showed me he said this is done in layers and it's in layers that you're going to remove it and so step by step he would lead me and so now every morning when I wake up I I put my hands on my head it may sound crazy but I say I break off in the name of Jesus Christ I break off every form of of witchcraft of black magic of mental telepathy of hypnosis of mind control I break it off of my soul in the name of Jesus and I have seen amazing results and see this is it is for the purpose of transferring spirits especially while we sleep for a targeted person their most you know vulnerable well for all of us our most vulnerable time is while we sleep but that's when the most damage can be done to them mentally so it's really important to speak the word over our minds. I've not been given a spirit of bondage to fear, but the Holy Spirit of power, love, and a sound mind. And I, what I found is that the more, and I, I think I've probably gotten on their nerves a few times because <laughs> they, it just it doesn't work for a believer. Mind control does not work when you are constantly putting your mind back on the word of God. Amen. And I think we could say that everybody whether you're a ti or not everybody deals with depression yes. with anger and rage to a certain extent and they have to deal with it through the cross by yes. dying to sin placing your faith in the cross and allowing the holy spirit to be released to you to overcome whatever problem it is and the same is true for a ti they must do the same thing but with a little more attitude if you will with a little more attitude against the devil recognizing that there's a spiritual element a directly satanic element and i think maybe even more than we realize to where we come against those spirits and we become very aggressive in this and fight back in a in a very real sense Yes, it has to be very aggressive. And actually, you know what? Now I, I take it as a compliment <laughs> that the devil, you know, through this system, this is a satanic system. There's no no question about it. 
and um, you know where I used to feel like how could you how could you allow this to happen to me God I, I just you know I was a baby I here I, I thought I knew the Lord but I was really a baby I did not I didn't like the discomfort I didn't like I wanted him to just come and swoop me up and rescue me out of it and I, I tried to I thought you know I looked into every way could you pay your way out of it can you you know get a hold of somebody and you know everything was <laughs> a closed door but now we were born for war you know as the body Amen. of Christ we don't Amen. we don't fight with weapons of flesh and blood we fight with the word and actually those who are targeted I would uh, I venture to say that the enemy of their souls knows that they've got something in them that is very very valuable and see this system part of it is to rob the Christian rob the believer of their their inheritance who they are and if I could just say one thing I wasn't gonna I don't know if I should get into it yet but the first thing the Holy Spirit told me is he said you've got to know who you are you don't know he showed me I did not know who I was and that I was like a prisoner of war that was just this helpless victim and and stuck and I didn't know what to do and so he began to reveal to me that that he was not going to come and rescue me now so don't anybody get discouraged by that um, maybe he'll do that for some of you but for me he didn't come and just take this thing off of me I had to put my boots on I had to say okay whatever it takes I'm not gonna be I'm not this is not gonna destroy my life either my God is bigger or he's not amen it took me a while to get there but but that's what you have to decide amen and I couldn't agree with you more and um, a big amen a big amen to that yeah. and as we are, we're going to be taking a short break at the top of the hour. And for those of you that would like to ask Julia some questions, post them in the chat, and Donna will be collecting them, printing them out, and giving to me. I am back here in my recliner as I am on YouTube, and Sister Donna is manning the controls here at Ground Zero. And she will pass those along to me, and I will pass those along to Julia, if you would like to ask her a question. And as we close out here to the top of the hour, Julia, what would be uh, of, of some of the bullet points of the most important keys for people to remember in dealing with this? Well, just as a little bit of background, because I didn't really uh, talk much about this, and, and honestly... Brother David, I don't understand all the technology, but the the main point I want to make here is these are military weapons, okay, that were designed to be used in warfare, <laughs> warfare, yeah. you know, with soldiers and the army and the, you know, okay, so these are military weapons and um, they you the, the things that are used are... Um, highly sophisticated there are at least 26 methods of surveillance that are used on a target we are watched 24 hours a day seven days a week everything we say is heard everything we do is known um, these uh, methods of these radar systems and microwaves they can they can stop a car they can destroy electronic equipment I've had my stuff destroyed I've had my my air conditioning knocked out I've had holes shot in my screen, um, bruises all over my body, burns on my face. I mean, these things. This is the kind of thing that people go through. Um, and then, then what's really tough is when you have these incredible pains that that you can't, you know, you, you can't uh, really get any diagnosis for because if you go to a doctor, they'll say there's nothing wrong with you and you're just a hypochondriac. I've had, I've had my lung hit so many times with microwaves for like a three-week period that I showed a woman I was completely marked up and you know just scratches and bruises and I thought I'm gonna die here in the middle of this but the, what I wanted the point I want to make is what the main thing of this warfare is it's all about psychological transformation or I would call it disintegration it's all about the disintegration of the mind and so when a believer gets a hold of the truth of God one of the things God showed me is he said, if I will, no matter what was physically happening to me, I mean, I've had, they've, they've given me abscesses. I had three abscesses at one time. One time I've had my teeth cracked. I've had dental pain that is out of this world that nothing will, nothing will take care of. 
Anyway, but he showed me that if I would not engage my mind in fear and if I would face fear head on and say, you will not overcome me, my God is greater and use the scriptures as a weapon, that's when I started seeing results. And uh, so the, the real answer here is in the spiritual realm because, see, this is a spiritual battle. Even though they're using uh, powerful weapons and high technology, it is a spiritual battle. Well, if we got to the place where we did understand all of the technology, they'd just develop some new we didn't understand. So we're going to have to come up with a more comprehensive attack and approach to the solution. Than Absolutely. 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 Yeah, and, and just one, one last note, Brother David, is God showed me. He said, you don't know what I can do on the other side. I highly believe and and. And I, I really, I know that I know that God sends out his angelic host, his warring host to fight for us. He can cause computers to blow up. He can, he can wreak havoc in the people's lives that are directing this towards a targeted person. And I don't wish that for them. I always pray that God will release his love to them. And, you know, that's after I get rid of the anger. <laughs> Sometimes I have to deal with anger initially. But then I forgive and I pray. For, but but I'm just telling you, we don't know. See, we don't. Someday we will see the entire picture. I believe God will show us. But for a targeted person, God has a number. He's got an arsenal of His own that He sends out to fight for us. Absolutely, and we know the Word of God says that the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. Amen. And we are going to take our break at the top of the hour we're going to take a short break and we're going to be back with a lot more from miss julia thompson we'll be right back thank you Make sure to subscribe to FOJC Radio on YouTube. There's a lot of imitations, but only one is the real thing. Thank you, and be blessed. Look for the open door for FOJC Radio on YouTube. You're listening to FOJC Radio, where truth in the Word of God is found. Well, welcome back to FOJC Radio, the special Monday night edition. And as we usually do, we are attacking an extremely controversial and cutting-edge topic, and that's what we do. We don't fear to jump into these issues and try to figure out what we can know and what we can do about these situations. And we are here to offer hope through the Lord to these individuals that are being victimized by this and we are here to gain information and learn and I think the more that we talk about this and interact I know more and more the big picture is beginning to come together and I'm seeing the connections here between satanic ritual abuse and with transhumanism and the entire global agenda of ultimate takeover in this beast machine and here in this second hour, I just maybe at the top, I'd like to ask what you think about, uh, do, do you think it's possible that there are certain false doctrines that have been taught within the American church that have left God's people ill-equipped to properly deal with this kind of satanic assault? Brother David, I do believe that there's um, wrong doctrines that have been that have been promoted, and um, the reason I say that is because when I when I really started digging into the scriptures, and I, I will admit to you, I was uh, I loved God. I, I got saved many years ago in college. I went to Purdue University, got my degree in aviation technology, and um, and I. I tended to listen more to what teachers taught me than to dig into the word and learn for myself. And I thought that um, if you were a Christian, that I lived 
I, or I should say I was born again kind of um, under the umbrella of the word and faith teaching, which I love it. I mean, there's there's a lot of good truths there. But I had this feeling that if a person was suffering from anything that, that um, was sustained in any way, that there was something wrong with them. And what I've learned in digging into the word through this situation that I've been through in the last couple of years is that um, we are not exempt from persecution. In fact, it's it's actually to be expected. Jesus said, if they hated you, they're going to hate me. Amen. But it's not to be feared because he has the answers. He brings. He promises to bring us through everything and that we will be triumphant in him. So I do think there have been some wrong doctrines. And through my personal experience, whenever I would talk to someone in the body of Christ, most of the time, um, they just shut me down immediately. They didn't want to hear about it. They said, we're not supposed to focus on anything negative. Uh, some people, see what, ha I call it selective theology, when you take out certain scriptures and you ignore the entire Bible. And, um, you know, people would say, you're supposed to fix your mind only on things that are good and pure and holy. And yes, I, I agree with that. And that's especially important for a targeted person. But God never said to ignore what was happening. He told us not to be ignorant of Satan's devices and that we were to be, um, what's the scripture, uh, to be vigilant because our enemy, the devil, like a roaring lion, roams about seeking whom he may devour. Amen. So we need to be wise. Yes, I have seen wrong doctrine taught. And I'll just be blunt. Julia's too polite, but I'll just be blunt. <laughs> okay. It is this word of faith doctrine that, and I, I believe in faith, I believe in healing, I believe in the gift of the Spirit, I believe in deliverance. But mm -hmm. this word of faith doctrine that has been propagated en masse over Christian television that puts forth this idea if you say you're if you say you're sick that's a negative confession you're not sick you just got the symptoms if you're going through anything it's your fault because yeah. you've got a lack of faith this is right out of the pit of hell that's where it is it's not uh, it's not of God it's out of the pit of hell and yeah. I have been speaking against this since the 70s and I've seen so many people hurt and beat up about it that this gets me a little angry I don't like uh, this is just very very wrong theology and it's not a doctrine of God it's a doctrine of a devil and this is this whole idea of American Christianity that uh, if you're suffering something's wrong with you and God won't let us suffer he's going to take us out of this world before the <laughs> tribulation so we won't have to suffer everything in the American church uh, sin doesn't have a reality uh, you know you don't have to ask forgiveness for your sins this right. whole package of garbage that is being pushed down the throat of evangelical Christianity it isn't coming from heaven it's coming out of the pit of hell and get me going but this is one of the big problems that God's people have to learn once again how to be sold how to get in the trenches and fight yes. and learn these spiritual principles of warfare that can bring down any strongholds. We need faith. We need real faith to know yes. that not the faith that'll keep us out of the lion's den, but the faith <laughs> that'll shut the lion's mouth while Amen. we're in the lion's den. And yes, that's what I, I like about you, Julie. So just go ahead and preach it to us. Just go ahead oh. and take us wherever you want to take us. I agree. Well, you know, that's really what, what I have learned through this is this was by God not coming. And well, I'll just say uh, initially I did. I, I mentioned this earlier, but I felt totally abandoned by God when all this stuff started hitting me. And um, I mean, I remember a couple times I tried to be very strong. You know, I, I, I can put on a strong exterior, but um, there were a couple times where I just broke down and said, why have you why have you forsaken me? Why have you left me? And I would hear this, you know, blank silence. <laughs> and so when I said, okay, you know, I'm going to love you anyway. I don't care if you want to depart or if you, you're not going to, if you don't answer me and don't just come and deliver me here, I'm just going to start seeking till I find the answers. And so what he showed me is that one day, um, one day the Lord, the Holy Spirit, 
it was like he played a movie in front of me of a prisoner of war, two different prisoners of war. One of them was um, was completely what I would call emotionally reactive. Everything that happened, he was falling apart. And he it was like he allowed me to see this soldier who who couldn't, uh, you know, he was hungry, he was hurting, he was sick, he was tired, he was beaten and ready to die. And and he just kept reacting. And the more he reacted to everything that happened, the, the lower he sunk. And then he showed me a picture of another prisoner of war who, um, who refused to react emotionally and he just kept drawing from the truth that he knew, that he'd been taught in, you know, in, in training, in boot camp. And he said, this is what you're going to have to do. You're going to have to draw upon the truth of my word like it is your very life, like it's a matter of life and death, because it is. And so I began to see how um, just because something, some emotional feeling, then the first thing I had to deal with was fear. That was the first thing. And I remember getting on my knees and, and facing it, that I might actually die. And I... I I remember talking to a friend. I told him, I said, I, I may die. And, you know, he didn't seem to care. <laughs> and so so I had to go back to the drawing board, back down on my knees with God. And, and he said, can you, can you face that? Can you face that fear that you may die and decide whether or not you're going to go on with me? And I did. I faced that fear and I thought, you know, uh, Jesus died so that I wouldn't be afraid of death. And for however, however long I'm here, I am going to passionately love him and serve him and get to know him more through the word and that's really what he did he began to show me that i needed to find my very life you know i don't live by bread alone but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of god and i actually began to love what he was teaching me about becoming a soldier to endure hardness as a good soldier Amen. and not to be afraid of difficulties and now i'm so glad i'm actually having come you know through this far I'm so grateful as I've seen the transformation. You know, I, I used to wake up, Brother David, day after day in the deepest fog, and I would feel like I'd been drugged because frequencies can actually produce. They, they affect the neurotransmitters in your brain, and they can make you feel like you're drugged. And, and I would sometimes I'd wake up shaking, my whole body vibrating, and I would feel so sick and so nauseated, and I just kept pressing through saying, you know, I... I don't care what I feel. I trust you, God, and I would declare his word that he would never leave me or forsake me. I memorized Psalm 91, committed several scriptures to memory that I would just declare day after day. You know, behold, I give unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy. Amen. And you know that first word for power, it actually means authority. Behold, I give unto you authority. And so it took a while because I didn't see things happen immediately. But the more I stood on God's word and I kept declaring it and I realized that, that it was because of what he saw in me. And I say this to targeted people. If you are targeted and you, you know, you may be tempted to feel a lot of pity and uh, just, you know, why me, God? But actually, God sees something in you. He sees an overcomer. He sees a soldier. And um, I sent a paper to... Sister Donna, but in that paper, to give to targeted people, in that paper I made it, um, let's see if I can find it here. Well, there's a couple of points here that um, that we will either, he, we will either rise up or be swallowed up. See, we, this is, you mentioned wrong doctrines in the church. This is one of the problems. We, you know, we're made to think that, I can't tell you how many times people come to me and say, well, God will take care of it. You know, he'll, he'll take care of this. Don't worry about it. If you do what you're supposed to do, he'll take care of you. And how could he How could he allow you to suffer like this? He, this couldn't be God. And, you know, <laughs> when you tell that to somebody that is trying with all their heart, I mean, I, I just kept searching and digging. What have I done wrong, God? You know, I must have done something. I, I broke every curse in my family line. I, you know, I, I, I just went to extremes. I tried to examine every motive in my heart and forgive every living person I ever knew in my life, <laughs> you know, because I thought I had done something. And that's another thing. This Robert Duncan, who was in on this program, and he is now a targeted individual for exposing it, he said they try to, part of the mental game of this is to put so much shame on the targeted person 
that they feel like this is happening to them and it's because of something they've done wrong. So it's really important that a person get a hold of their mind and they say, hey, I'm in this for the long haul. I am going to, I am going to fight. I am not going to be overtaken by demonic forces operating through the electronic magnetic, uh, electromagnetic fields and I, whatever attacks my brain. I'm not going to be controlled by that. I am only going to be responsive and only going to live by the word of God. So, um, oh, I made a point here, you know, there are no babies in the army of God. Um, this is not an obligation, but it's an honor. It is one of the highest honors uh, to be shown by God that you're called to be on the front lines. Amen. I mean, we're talking, this is the front lines. There is nothing more critical in our nation than the absolute overtaking of humanity with electronic weapons. I mean, it, it affects everyone, see? And if there aren't people who know how to overcome and stand up to it and even expose it when he directs us and pray against it. See, I pray that this whole thing will be exposed. But nevertheless, if God, you know, if he doesn't expose it and this is actually, you know, like the beginning of the end, I'm going all the way through. And um, I, I made a note here on this paper I wrote, this is the highest level of warfare a man can experience because you, we have no earthly weapons to depend on. All I have is my relationship with God and my, my holding fast to his word and using the weapon. The word is a weapon and it's powerful. And that's what his angels hearken to the voice of his commands. They hearken, they go do what we speak in the word. And so, um, you know, it's not, it's not, it seems like the most horrible thing that could ever happen to an individual. And in the natural, it is. And that's another point I want to make, Brother David, is that, um, you know, we're made up of body, soul, and spirit. Okay, they, the body can be attacked with these weapons. The mind can be attacked with these weapons. But what they cannot touch, unless the mind is willing, they cannot touch the spirit. And what I've learned here, even this, very, very recently, the Holy Spirit has been showing me that the Holy Spirit, if we want, if we, if we are yielded to Him, if our mind is in agreement with what the truth of God says about this, um, you know, about anything, any time we're under attack, if we get in agreement with God's Word, it opens the door to the power of the Holy Spirit. Then to to literally, I believe, transform us physically and mentally. Amen. You know, I don't have the confusion I used to have. I, I've actually been delivered of it. Praise the Lord. Amen. You know, I don't have the physical attacks that I used to have. So I'm telling you, there, there's the word is where the power is. Amen. And it, it's just like we might have an analogy that there are more healings physical healings in areas where there are no doctors and <laughs> right. now we're in a situation where there's nothing physically we can do but pray so it's going yeah. to drive us to a new level of real faith and to new battles that will yes. give us new strategies that are going to give us the victory in this and every other situation and in him we know that we are more than conquerors and this is Satan's end game, we know. He wants people to lose hope, and he wants people to give in to the fear, to become overwhelmed with fear, and yes. to just lay down and give in to it. And this sure. is what we cannot do. We have to bind together, kick back, fight back, and refuse to lay down and be the devil's punching bag. You know, Brother David, you, you reminded me of something else that I think is an important point. Um, you know, I, I'm thinking of a, a dear sister of mine that passed away about a year ago from cancer. And I'm not saying she didn't have cancer. I, I, I wouldn't say that. I wouldn't make that judgment. But uh, people need to be aware that the American Medical Association is also being controlled. And I would venture to say there are possibly people that um, that are diagnosed with things that they don't always have. <laughs> Because one of the one of the characteristics of this type of warfare, which I'm going out on a limb here, but I have reasons to believe this is true, is that many people are being radiated that aren't called targeted individuals, but just overall in the entire nation. 
And I say that because people have noticed that there are signs, like on weather maps, there are signs of excessive radiation that are beyond levels that are healthy for the human body. Okay, so it's it's possible that, you know, people are, well, we know they're developing cancer at skyrocketing rates, but we need to be very much aware that um, things can happen. <laughs> things can happen when you go to doctors. You need to know, you need to really know your doctor and know that they can be trusted because doctors are now being required to implant people involuntarily. They don't tell them about it. A very simple procedure, even something as simple as drawing blood, they can put an, a tracking implant in a person. I just listened to a medical professor explaining this. And this is what, um, you know, the, the, the global elite, this is, see, they, they basically, we have good people in our government. I, I want to clarify when I said that before that this is our government. It's, it's shadow government. There are good people working in the government, but there is there has been an overtaking of our government, a hijacking, basically, is what I'd call it. And the people with money are calling the shots, and they are they are requiring that um, you know the the compromise of the medical community to the to the point where you know they are. In, I have a friend who was who had diabetes, had his foot worked on, and he had an implant put in his foot. And the, it, the wound would never heal. And, um, you know, he just recently had to go to the doctor and have part of his foot removed. So it, we have to be very careful. So I really agree with you about not running to doctors. <laughs> and, and I want to make one other clarification concerning my blood. I, don't, I haven't been to a doctor or been sick for so long. It wasn't until these last two years that I have had you know a number of things happen I had pneumonia three times and uh, just you know really I don't get it anymore fortunately but um, I think they are also there you see this is a network and a lot of times they will plant viruses because they there is a something called InfraGuard which is citizens that actually work under this network to go and do things they go into people's homes they come into my home frequently. They'll leave the lights on. They do something to make sure I know they've been there. And um, and they can also plant viruses. Um, and I, they do it. So, so see, we're really not in a time where we can be just say, well, God will take care of everything. I think I'll just, you know, go back to bed or go watch TV. This is critical. We have got to be aware of what's happening. And that's why they're doing this, see, is because people are unaware. And I, I agree with you so much. And like I said earlier, I believe that we're at the place where there are very few people in America that are not affected by these things we're discussing to some extent. And you're really talking to the choir here uh, because the very... Uh, the symbol of the American Medical, Me Medical Association is the caduceus, which was the symbol of the god of Cephalus, which in scripture is where at Pergamum the, the seat of Satan is. So we certainly mm -hmm. know that so much is being done through medicine that is certainly not of God and of the evil right. one's agenda. And one more, uh, we'll get a kind of a big picture question in here, and we've got some questions here from our listeners that uh, okay. we want you to answer. But Second uh, Thessalonians 2 and 4 says, Who opposeth and exalteth himself above all that is called God, or that is worshipped, so that he, as God, sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. And I believe that this temple is the temple of believers that are the temple of God corporately, and that the beast wants to sit right down in the midst of God's people, in their hearts and their minds. Do you believe that this is some kind of uh, big picture, antichrist agenda to take over the temple of God? Oh, I absolutely do. Absolutely. Because, he see, Satan, as we know, he, he wants to be God. And I all the time, you know, <laughs> I've said, you know, he's just a wannabe. That's what he is. He wants to be God. And so he, that's why there is all this extreme surveillance, extreme monitoring. I mean, I, I've listened to several programs that talk about how, I mean, even even video games, they're, they have ways of picking up on the 
the thoughts of people playing these kids playing these video games and there is so much monitoring of the human person now on every level their bodies their minds their you know what they do where they go who their friends are um, yes he wants to take over the temple and that's been that's part of my motivation brother David is because I saw he wanted my temple and another thing that they do to targeted people see they, they want to absolutely disintegrate your morals and early on they started uh, sending frequencies to my private area this is kind of embarrassing to talk about but but I'm just telling you the truth I mean there is no <laughs> there's nothing too low that they won't do okay and part of the reason for that is they want people to you know they want them to um, get rid of their morals you know to change to do different things and and see the reason why and this is not just my experience but this is I've heard this from other TIs where with women they will just do it incessantly just it, it's a it's a, like a vibration to your crotch and it is it is so disgusting and you just get so <laughs> And that's part of that's another reason why they would do it if they know that it really bothers somebody. And I feel very strongly about being holy and pure. I'm a single woman. I've never been married. I am not, you know, I'm not going to go out and have sex with anybody I can find. I'm not going to do it at all <laughs> outside of marriage. So, um, so this is the it is it is Satan wanting to take over the thoughts. They will implant thoughts in people's minds. I just talked to a man last night. This is one of the most articulate, intelligent individuals I've met in a long time he has three degrees uh, he worked he was a radiologist in the in the Navy and he told me last night that he has been having these thoughts right now he's struggling I, I don't know if he's actually full-blown targeted but but he has a lot of symptoms of a targeted person and many people in the military are targeted but um, he started telling me how he was having these thoughts of and dreams of just going out and shooting people he's been very frustrated because he can't find work and it, it, it didn't make sense he's he's too intelligent he's too skilled he's charming he's you know very personable but he started telling me that and I thought oh my gosh you know that is it's it's so against his nature that it made me think that I wonder if this is a form of mind control so you know Satan wants the whole thing he wants the entire package he wants us to worship him and for believers see I think the way what he wants to do is wear us down to where we just you know we get tired of fighting and and I'm telling you <laughs> to any believer that feels that way don't go that direction because if you just keep pressing into God and you just you prove his word true and you don't quit and don't get him give up you have gotta be tenacious I'm not saying this is easy but it's worth it because the you know Paul said that I may know him in the fellowship of his sufferings and the power of his resurrection life when you start experiencing that resurrection life it is absolutely astounding it is so exciting uh, I mean it it's a thrill but I absolutely agree with you he wants the temple the whole temple and I just want to thank you for being so frank about such embarrassing personal oh, embarrassing horrible. things and I I have had heard the same thing from men TIs and I guarantee you when some guy calls you up and tells you that he's being hit in his genitals with beams from a satellite the first thing you want to do is just you and just want to hang the phone up you know you just don't even want to go there <laughs> but this is in satanic ritual abuse and with TIs this sexual aspect is always there because this is one of the most defiling and shameful and denigrating things that Satan can do yes. and I believe that there is a big connection between the incubi and the succubi and mm -hmm. this electronic programming that there here again I think a lot of times we're dealing with the combination that this this type of a thing could even open doors uh, nocturnally to this kind of attack 
And yes. that the more we're aware of this uh, kind of a one-two punch, the more we can more wisely pray against this type of thing. But yes. thank you for being uh, so frank and helpful because this is a very helpful thing because it's something we need to talk about because uh, we have heard this from men and women alike. Satan plays dirty. Oh, yeah, and it's dirty. Uh, this is uh, just one of his dirty tricks. And mm-hmm. I want to go ahead and begin with the questions where we could get some more in. And I want to make sure that we get the listeners' questions in. And uh, there's one here from Valerie 11. Can they actually target an individual's house? Yes. Yes, they can. Um, I, I have noises all the time in my house. Um, I used to hear things hit the roof, hit the walls. Um, they love to hit my water bottle with directed energy weapons. <laughs> I'll tell you a funny thing. I was doing worship at a, uh, it's called House of Prayer, and uh, I had a two-hour set to do. I was playing the keyboard, and, and I had asked the, the woman, or you know, she had asked me, actually, if I wanted a drummer to come. And I said, yeah, that'd be great. Well, he didn't show up. Well, while I'm playing, the cymbals started playing. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> yeah. And she said, the <laughs> funny oh part was, <laughs> <laughs> she, you could hear him being hit. She said, is that God? And I said, no, that's not God. <laughs> oh, my, you got you to gotta <laughs> laugh to keep from crying sometimes. But that is too, that's too over the top, isn't it? Yeah, I yeah they can they can uh, target a house as far as t- that make noises. Um, there have been people that have seen blue lights and various colored lights in their homes. I've never seen that, um, but yes, they can target a house. They can also hit a vehicle with. They can remotely control a vehicle with. Um, I had all the the belts blown off my car one day after I talked to a lawyer on the way home. Um, I've had various, many things done to my cars. So, that answers that. Does that answer that question? Yes, ma'am, it does. And here is one from CB. Uh, Okay. heavy, Heavy metal poisonings. Is there a connection here with heavy metal poisoning? Um, yes, I believe there is because, see, what we're breathing is heavy metals, and a lot of times targeted people complain of taste, a metallic taste in their mouth. Um, I don't know. I don't know if um, there might be more of a danger of heavy metal poisoning because if you're hit by directed energy weapons, what it does is it heats up your body. And because um, microwave energy, just like if you put something, you know, a piece of meat in the microwave, it's what's heating it what what it's actually heating is the water in the meat first okay so microwaves are directed at the water in the system they they cause the molecules to vibrate and accelerate okay so um one of the things that happens is your blood gets thicker and i notice with me i don't i'm not sure this will fit in line with what he's asking but i i noticed that uh, I've had times where my head would be so on fire. Now, I'm not talking about, you know, like a hot flash. I'm talking about sustained heat where I could actually smell the iron in my blood. And I'd have to wear, you know, ice packs on my head. It was just really horrible. But um, I think there, I think, I think mostly the heavy metal poisoning, I don't know if they can actually come in and, and do that. You know, with a person's food, I've had things added to my food, but but my main concern with heavy metals is coming from the chemtrails because they are loaded with metals. All right, here's another one from CB. The then head of the American Psychiatric Association, Dr. Owen Cameron, was heavily involved in MK Ultra, and targeted people are always referred back to members of the APA. How does that work? Question mark. Control. Okay. Um, they're always... Well, uh, I'm not sure I can answer that exactly, completely, but I will tell you this is very, very common for targeted people that they want to get them uh, institutionalized. Twice I have 
gotten a targeted individual that was, uh, I mean, she was <laughs> picked up for just erroneous reasons. They were ridiculous by the police and um, taken to a mental hospital. They said she needed evaluation, and twice she we were able to get her out. But that's a very common thing that they want to do. Um, as far as, I'm not sure I exactly understand the question. Okay, I think that he is asking, is the American Psychi Psychiatric Association involved in this? Yes, because, absolutely, yeah. absolutely. Yes, all of the medical profession, and especially when it comes to psychiatric problems. They, they, like, to, um, they like to have targeted people diagnosed with schizophrenia and that's another thing I just read in Dr. Bunk, um, excuse me, Dr. Duncan's book is that um, bipolarity is what they're that's what they're after they're after a person who is who shows signs of being bipolar to get them or schizophrenia to get them institutionalized so somebody so the, diagnosed the best, I'm sorry go ahead so somebody diagnosed as bipolar would automatically go up on the potential target list um, it's possible because they would be it would be difficult for them to fight back yeah see once you've been diagnosed with a any kind of psychological uh, problem then you you lose credibility as far as when it comes to giving testimony about what you're going through, I mean, it, I'm not saying that it's over for the person, but it's just that it's right. it's it's a it's hard to move forward as far as exposing what you've been through because people don't believe you, you know, once you've been diagnosed. Right. And then the psychiatrist is going to give you drugs that is yes. going to make it yes. much easier for you to be targeted, manipulated, and controlled. Yes. And I, I hear I hear is another very point of similarity uh, through CB's question that connects with satanic ritual abuse. Um, there was a group of psychiatrists that developed. Uh, what was called the False Memory Syndrome Foundation. Mm -hmm. And what this was, was a group of professionals that became professional testifiers, basically. They would write articles and put out information to say that anybody that claimed to have a recovered memory, that these were all false, these were all false memories, mm -hmm. that they were absolutely wrong and not credible. And uh, one of the fellows, Ralph Underwager, he wrote articles for the Journal of Pedophilia. And uh, another one of the individuals that was one of the founders of this board was accused by his own daughter of molestation. So oh the, the agenda here was obvious. But these people are definitely involved in this. And the connections just keep, uh, the dots just keep connecting. Yes. Yes, that's that's horrible. Um, I, you know, I highly recommend. In fact, other people that have been that know this program a lot better than I do. They they encourage TIs to not go to psychiatrists. Um, I mean, unless they feel an absolute need to. And of course, I would always Ooh, seek out yeah. someone who is a Christian or someone they know they can trust. But um, yeah, I know, um, and I'm a little odd just interject real briefly I know recently a case here in Evansville there was a woman that was involved in an incestuous relationship with her brother and oh, she wow. went to a psychiatrist and the psychiatrist said you know if you don't have a problem with it just continue with it you know oh, it, it just, just sick the advice but anyway here's another question well, that tells you where they're at <laughs> yeah it really does and it's not with god or it's not with any good reason or common sense and the whole um psychology is from atheistic god-hating dingbats and we could talk yeah. all night about that here's a here's a question from meadow E. Lasager, and I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. I'm sure that I'm not. But here's the question. What are some, and we've covered this some, I believe, but here's the question. What are some indications that a person is being targeted? Okay, that's a good question. Um, let me, I've got a list here of some of the things I've been through because I, I didn't, some things I didn't want to forget. Okay. Ways that you will know that you are targeted, um, 
could be things as simple as um, you, you notice that your emails are being tampered with or your phone calls are being unusually dropped. I mean, like, have unusual frequency. Um, sometimes it's very minor things at first. You could see uh, an unusual amount of breakdowns with your vehicle. Um, um, for me, one time I had uh, four flat tires in two months, which just was not normal. Okay, you might start feeling... Uh, Another thing that I remember in the early stages, I'm thinking back to the early stages, I would have heart palpitations and I didn't know why. Or I would wake up feeling like I was slightly vibrating, like something was sweeping my body. And I thought it was just getting older. I didn't really know what it was. Um, some of these are, now this doesn't necessarily, maybe I shouldn't say, that may not mean you're targeted, but these are just signs to be aware of. Some of the, the more noticeable signs are... Um, if you, if you find that people are unusually turning against you for no apparent reason, you know, that, that you just every which way you go, uh, if you see people following you, that's, a, that's usually a sign of being targeted. Or um, one time I had somebody put a smoke bomb under my car and I thought my car was on fire. <laughs> I mean, there's just... Um, so holding up your mail, uh, these are just some of the... The lighter signs. Uh, if you if you notice that you come home and all of a sudden, you know, let's say you put a, a file folder, you left it on your desk, and you find it in the living room. Uh, this they love to do this. They love to come in people's homes, and they can get in any anybody's home. I don't know how they do it. I mean, I've I've discovered some things, but um, it's they know all the tricks. So if you find things that are moved around or insignificant things that are missing that's a sign um, I would say electronic things in your house that are, are uh, you know like if you have uh, for me my smoke alarms would go off all at once for no reason you know there's I was asleep in bed <laughs> just crazy things like that um, now as far as your physical body if you if you wake up and you've got bruises on your body and you don't know where they came from or you've got puncture wounds or you're extremely lightheaded and you feel like you can't think like you're just in a deep brain fog and you can't make decisions mental confusion is a very big sign of being targeted um, if you ever notice burns to your body you know I've never had a, a, a suit a really um, dramatically severe burn but if you have like welts on your skin that you don't know of anything you did aches and pains um, are the feeling of arthritis that's really common um, if you find yourself growling in your sleep now that's something else they love to do they love to make people put like a, a growling noise in their throat if you smell things in your, if you ever smell things that are not actually in your house, like I used to, used to be, um, I'd be laying in bed and all of a sudden I'd smell what seemed like burnt spaghetti, and that's something they do as well. Because see, they're testing all these things to see um, this. They can actually send frequencies to the brain that make you think you are smelling something that that they have this frequency for. So. Um, so people turning against you, uh, unusual noises, like one of the things they do is they call them noise campaigns, and they, they have, they'll do things like cause your dogs to bark at nothing when there's nothing there. They cause my dogs to fight sometimes, and they never used to fight. They, uh, they've caused my dogs to urinate all over my house. Dogs can be mind controlled, <laughs> and they do, they do that to a targeted person. I mean, sometimes. I don't know that they always do it. But those are just some of the things. But it, mostly it's going to be unusual pains that you cannot trace back to anything you've done. And, um, and, and especially lightheaded dizziness, fogginess, vibrations to your body. I'll tell you one thing, Brother David, this is important. I go and I minister at senior citizens' homes. And one of the things I noticed is I'd go to pray for people and I'd, you know, just put my hand on their head or on their back where it was ever was hurting. And sometimes I'd feel a pulsing. I could feel a pulsing and it, w it was not their natural pulse. Pulsing, if you ever feel pulsing to your body, 
put your hand there and if it and if the pain stops then you know you are being hit with a some kind of a frequency probably microwave driven weapon now go over that again i want to make sure we get this okay if you have let's say you um you wake up and you've got uh a horrible pain in your stomach and if you put your hands in that area put your arms where that pain is and that pain stops then that means it's coming externally it's okay. it's from or if you had a pain in your back and you put your hand where that pain is sometimes if it's if they're using a pulsing microwave you'll actually feel a pulsing on your body okay. i think they've perfected that program cuz i i don't feel that as much anymore but but the main thing is if you in other words see microwaves only go 164th into the surface of the skin so they don't go very deep but if they have a they tend to be the they carry frequencies it's called a piggyback so the microwave piggybacks with a frequency and they direct it to certain parts of your body so if you have a pain put your hand there and if it stops then you know it's external very, and if it doesn't stop good. then it's you know something in your own body but now this is i just want to make this point this they do this a lot they they mimic all kinds of diseases they have mapped 600 frequencies of the human body that they can attack so um that's just one way to tell i could actually when i would put my hands on people sometimes i could feel the vibration on my hands of these weapons very good uh here is a question from tracy ossi does julia pray to jesus to take her prayers to the spiritual level asking god to refuse the angels that are attacking her um well you know what i i don't i um what i do is i come boldly before the throne of grace because i i've i see myself now as a daughter of the most high I I know that he sees me through the blood and I do come in the name of Jesus Christ because he's my husband. <laughs> I love him so much. So I come before the throne and um and I come direct I believe in coming directly to God Amen. through the blood of Jesus Christ and I believe that and I do ask him to send out his warring hosts according to Psalm 91. Um well to that they bear me up but also there's other scriptures that talk about um him sending his hosts to fight for us. So I do believe that that they fight for us. Now if you have some if you're giving me a tip then I'm certainly open to it. Is she giving me a tip? Is she telling I me I need know. to? I don't know. Well, Aussie will have to respond to that. Uh, yeah. Here is a question from Mishuzu and once again I hope I'm saying that correctly. But the question is is there any way we can tell if they have put a chip in us? I have heard even dentists can sneak one in us. Oh yes, in crowns. Yeah. Or root canals. Um there are some devices I just heard today about a a woman, uh she's an attorney. I believe she's an attorney. Mel- Melinda Kidder is her name, and she does she uses five different methods for scanning people for implants. And there's another woman named Hilda Stanninger. Um I I don't personally now I I I have had a friend here actually that ran a metal detector over my body that all it's very sensitive metal detector and he found various places where there were wires or something you know but I don't um I don't have personal experience with locating implants sometimes it's tough to get a doctor to do that because they you know they they'll lose their license more than likely Now here is another question from Miss Huzu. Are they mon- are they monitoring TI's reactions to the attacks? Oh yes, that's the primary impetus of this. This is that's that's what they're doing. They're monitoring our responses. That's why you want to give them a run for their money by not reacting. In fact, I just listened to a man, there's a man named David Boyd. He worked in the Navy with the control systems, human interface machines, I think they're called, and and he 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 used these weapons. 
And when he learned what they were being, how they were being used on people, he left, and he's now walking across the country to raise awareness on electronic weapons. And he said that because even 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 though this is so physical, again, I I emphasize, he said the main thing that they are monitoring is the psychological response to everything they do. So what he said is he said you need to get to the point where you don't let anything trouble you or bother you. Well, you know, that's easier said than done. <laughs> but if wow. you are if you if you know Jesus Christ and you dig in the word, you can do it. But but I'm just saying um, yes, to answer, they do monitor the response. What? See, they want to, Brother David, they want to know what they can unleash on the entire public. Right. They want to know how people are going to act when they start getting pulsed with frequencies. Because see, we are already, I mean, it's not. I'm not talking about TIs. The average person is already set up having been breathing all these, these heavy metals and through chemtrails and so forth. They're already set up to be walking transmitters. They're literally just experimenting on you to get your reaction and yes. uh, collecting data. Yes, that's it. Well, and, and also, you know, I mean, some people, they really do want to kill them. But, you know, God says we don't go until he says, till it's time. This question asks, what scriptures have helped you the most? Oh, my gosh. That's a tough one because I am so, I have come to love the word so much. Um, Give us three. Give us your top three bullet points. Oh boy! I gotta think about it. <laughs> There's so many good ones. Um, Psalm ninety-one. Yes, Psalm ninety-one is one of the biggest ones. And I'm a, I'll tell you one that I love, and this is this is a key. I, I actually have like just a, a little list of keys for um, for targeted people, but Psalm two is one of my favorite favorite scriptures because um, oh I don't have it right in front of me Psalm 2 it's where it talks about let's see here if I can just gonna see if I can get it it's where it talks about how God uh, looks at the enemy and he laughs it says uh, let me get it here I can't tell you, Brother David, how many times the Holy Spirit has led me into outright belly laughs when I think about how the God of this world, he actually thinks he's going to whack God. He thinks he's going to he thinks he's going to take over the whole situation. And I can it's hard to explain, but it's so funny because I imagine I imagine the armies of the earth shooting these military weapons at God. <laughs> and it's hilarious. Anyway, it says, "Lord, how they are increased that Oh, no, I'm sorry. Why did the heathen rage? This is Psalm 2. Why did the heathen rage and the people imagine a vain thing? The kings of the earth set themselves and the rulers take counsel together against the Lord, against his anointed. That's us. (laughs) Saying, let us break their bands asunder and cast away their cords from us. He that sits in the heavens shall laugh. The Lord shall have them in derision. And then it just goes on um, to say more. Another one of my favorites is Psalm 149. And then Psalm Psalm ninety one and uh, let's see this one particular part of Psalm one forty nine it says for the Lord takes pleasure in His people okay He will beautify the meek with salvation um, I'm sorry let me start at verse six let the high praises of God be in their mouth and a two edged sword in their hand which is the word of God to execute vengeance upon the heathen and punishments upon the people, to bind their kings with chains and their nobles with fetters of iron, to execute upon them the judgment written, this honor have all his saints. Praise ye the Lord. Now, you know, I'm not talking about people there. I believe for us, it's talking about the demonic realm. And so when I pray, I pray, God, send your angelic hosts to bind them up with chains and fetters of iron that they can't break through. See, if, if we disempower the demonic powers by our authority that we have through Jesus Christ, then the angels go and they actually carry it out, I do believe. Now, that doesn't mean that we don't suffer in this life, but, but this is part of preparing to rule and reign with Jesus Christ. We must know who we are and what our position of authority is. And, you know, the more you're willing to, to bear up under suffering and to trust God in the midst of it, 
the more he the more power and authority you actually start walking in you know what i mean so that i know what i've you seen mean. amazing answers to my prayers after having gone through this stuff where you know i i see the authority of god manifested in a situation where i couldn't have changed it but because i'm learning how to walk in the authority he's given me things change and you know uh saying? And I think you pretty much answered uh, Tracy Aussie's question. She responded back, I was going on the talks from David that we can ask God through Jesus to refuse the unclean spirits that want to attack us. And yes, absolutely, we certainly can. And in this situation, we want to keep in mind that we're dealing with a spiritual aspect and a physical. And we have uh, both things in play there. But uh, Yes. Amen. Now, here's one from L. Crystal I.S., how do you think they can get everyone around you to attack you without cause? Okay, one of the ways they do that is, um, I don't know if you've ever heard of HARP. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, you know, HARP, these are transformers that are all over the world. And now I'm not saying that this is always the case, but I know HARP is being used extensively. And what it does is it skews the magnetic fields so that... Um, and and it actually they they have sent it out. I just listened to a mind control expert, and he was saying they it broadcasts a signal that is the same frequency as what the human brain broadcasts. It's like so many hertz. I don't remember how many hertz it was. Anyway, what it does is it supposedly opens up the mind. It it does something with the ions in your brain. I'm sorry, I'm, I don't know all the science behind it, but the, it breaks down the defenses to mind control. Okay. One of the things, um, when I, I mentioned Jose Delgado, see, one of the things after he tried that with the electrodes in people's brains, he all he discovered that he didn't need to put electrodes in people's brains. All they had to do was learn how to send frequencies through the through electromagnetic through the fields, electromagnetic fields to the human brain. See, they've learned what frequencies to use to agitate people and to pacify people. Um, there have been reports on this that for riot control, you know, they'll use microwaves. So what I think is possibly happening is that they can also send suggestions that are transferred to people's minds. I don't know the science behind it, but I do know that this is done constantly with targeted people. So I, I wish I could tell you exactly how they do it. That I don't know, but I know that it is done constantly. And the person that is going through that, you have to just... Um, you try to just forgive, let it go. The less you respond and react to it, it goes away. I used to experience that kind of stuff a lot, and now nobody, I, I never have that anymore. And if they do, oh, I, I will say this. Somebody the other day, I was at a stoplight, and they just kept giving me the finger. <laughs> I thought, that's a weird thing. I'm just behind them at a stoplight. <laughs> and there was nobody else there, so I knew it was directed to me. But, you know, you just have to let that stuff go if people... Um, you know, don't understand you. I don't know how else to say it, but yes, they do that. What role? I'm. I'm going to ask one more question here. Sure. And um, we can close out in prayer tonight with prayer for all of these victims and for prayer for all of us to help understand this better. But what role does unforgiveness play in this? It has oh. to really be. A struggle for a TI to come to the place where they can rid their heart of unforgiveness toward this horrific, relentless abuse that they oh. are subjected to. Speak to that just a few moments before we close tonight, Julia. Brother David, that is that is such a good point. I'm really glad this person brought this up because um, unforgiveness is critical. Because what you don't want, and you got to remember, what the whole purpose of this is to cause you to fear, to dismantle. The whole satanic system is about dismantling love. It's to turn people basically into robots. That's what transhumanism is all about. People that are that have no emotion, no individuality, no personality. They're just they just exist. And so in order to do that, you've got to basically harden people. They've got to become basically numb and where they don't care. And one of the ways that that can happen is when you 
when you are suffering and you um, you don't forgive, um, your mind does. You become kind of numb. You just you don't feel things. So what I've had to do, and this is this is probably the biggest battle I've had. What I, I make myself pray for the people that are harassing and hurting me. I force myself. I say, God, I know that if they understood that they're bringing curses upon themselves, they would never do this. The Bible says, cursed is every man who strikes his neighbor in secret. I mean, there, there's just, uh, you know, throughout the Bible, what happens. The first scripture he ever gave me when this happened, after Ezekiel, was he said, those who seek to destroy my soul will go into the lower parts of the earth. That's Psalm 63, 9. Anyway, so I have had to actively forgive, and I constantly, you know, if I start to feel anger rise up, I just say, God, help me. I, I can't, sometimes I can't do it by myself. I have to ask him, and he does help us forgive. But if you'll just do it by an act of your will, even if you don't feel it, God will honor that. But if you if you don't get rid of unforgiveness, you are giving the devil a, a wide open door to you. I mean, wide open. This is what he wants. See, he's and especially with Christians, he knows. He, they know. The people operating this system know that it's death to us if we if we don't forgive. So you know, it, you need to do it no matter what. And um, there have been times when I've actually I used to I used to cry for these people. I mean, I used to get on my face and just just weep because I thought, how can anybody do this? I mean, what's going to happen to them? What what will they say to God when it's all over? And a lot of these people do not, they're trapped themselves, they're, they're um, threatened that if they leave, if they get out of this, they're going to be targets themselves. So, you know, we don't know the whole picture, but just do the very, just make it a decision, an act of your will to forgive. I think that is such fantastic advice, and we are at a little over two hours into this broadcast, and... I think we're going to close for this evening. We're certainly not going to close in our warfare or in our efforts in this topic. But I just want to thank everyone that listened tonight, uh, for those that fellowshiped and took part in the chat. And I want to thank you so much, Julia, for bringing thank this you. information to you. We appreciate your courage and your willingness to do that. Thank you so very much. Thank you for having me. I appreciate being able to share. And um, I, I just, my, my deepest heartfelt prayer is that targeted people would know you are not alone. And this is not, this is not God, you know, doing this to you. It's, it's an opportunity. You need to look at it as an opportunity to grow up and mature and become what he wants you to be. And, um, and just don't let your heart get bitter. That's really important. And uh, Brother David, could I just run through a list of things? You sure Real can. Okay. Because um, I, th this, these are things that I've learned over the last couple of years. Um, the first thing is the word, to read it and declare it. The second thing is, and I mean, you know, dig into the scriptures that, that mean something to you, that, that speak to your situation, and declare it. And, and if you can, commit some things to memory. Um, the second is prayer, especially, you know, pray for yourself, but also pray for others. Pray for other targeted people. Pray that this would be exposed. Pray that, um, that God will, you know, show you everything that you can learn through this. Okay? Extravagant worship is number three. Worship God no matter how bad things look because that's another thing they want to do. They they constantly there was a period of time where I just heard it daily. Where's your God? If if he's so if he loves you so much, why isn't he helping you? So when you worship God, you are saying, Hey, I don't care. Even if I don't see you yet delivering me, I love you, I trust you. Um, number four is pray that he will send out his warring hosts, his warring angelic hosts to fight for you. And he will do that. Um Number five, laughter. See things from God's perspective. You know, this this is just a for a period of time. Um, it's really a merry heart does good like medicine. It's really important, even if you have to, you know, whatever you have to do, learn how to 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 laugh at what at the ridiculousness of Satan thinking that he's going to be God and he's going to overtake this whole system because it is ridiculous. Um, okay, we talked about love and forgiveness of your enemies. I cover them in the blood. 
I ask for their deliverance and their freedom and that God, I've even said, you know, I just break the power of mind control off of these people. I pray for them. Okay, serve others. If you can do anything to give to someone else in the form of, you know, even acts of kindness. One of the things, another thing about this program is it's it's meant to be to make you to make targeted people completely self-centered and self-absorbed. So the more you reach out to give to other people, just forgetting about your own problems, it has amazing, powerful results. Um, communion, I highly recommend that every day, if not a few times a day, if you're really suffering. That, that will break, that quickly will break some stuff off of you because the enemy hates to hear about the blood and body of Jesus Christ. And God loves it. Um, I mentioned earlier number nine is die to the fear of death and all other fears. Learn how to start facing the fear and facing the fear of death and decide whether or not you, you, know, you still love God and you will still go on. This is critical because they're try- this is to drive a wedge between the person and God. That's the enemy's main objective here, or one of his main objectives, to, to, to get us to doubt God's goodness and faithfulness. Um, and then the last, oh, number, uh, number 10 is be extremely thankful. Look for anything, even the tiniest things, to be thankful for. God loves it, and it will lift that spirit of heaviness off of you if you're feeling depressed and discouraged. And then the last thing is fight the good fight of faith. Because you're destined to win. And anybody, Brother David, that needs uh, some encouragement or more scriptures, i got a tons of scriptures for this situation. And um, I have a we- or not a website, but a, an email called Truth to the Number 2 Overcome. And it's at ProtonMail.com. Okay, repeat that one more time. Okay. It's, uh, let's see here. And I, wanted to, I just got it, Donna's so I wanted to make sure I had the right thing, but yeah, I got it. it it's, it's truth, T-R-U-T-H, the number two, overcome, at proton, which is spelled P-R-O-T-O-N, mail, M-A-I-L, dot com. And those points you gave were so good. Thank you. That I want to get those written out, and I want to get those posted on our website for um, all TIs, and they're they're good for everybody, but especially for those that are being victimized by this horrible thing. And if you will, Julia, pray us out tonight. And okay. Close us in prayer for all the victims of this horrific abuse. And once again, thank you so much. We not only tonight have brought information telling people there is a problem, but we have offered some concrete solutions. And we know that the Lord is the answer for everything. So thank you so much, Julia. Pray us Thank tonight. you. Thank you for having me. Um, the, uh, Brother David, there's one thing that just came to my mind. I think I should share this. Well, um, you go right ahead. Th- this is a natural thing. If you, if there are any TIs out there and you have ringing in your ears, that's a common, common thing that happens. Um, it helps if you can get something like rose oil, rose essential oil, or uh, peppermint oil, and when you and put it in your ears, and it will actually, it, it actually raises your frequency because we are this is we are frequency beings and. Um, the more the more your own frequency is raised, it, it seems to relieve some of the anxiety and pressure on your ears, maybe. Um, and that's all the natural stuff. I, you know, there's there's some things that I'm researching to find out natural things that will help alleviate this. I highly recommend if you can get a hold of wheatgrass juice um, at a health food store. It's a superfood that will replenish your body with a lot of nutrients because targeted people usually don't want to eat it a lot of times it takes your appetite away and they get very weak but this is something that is um, very very nutritious so wheatgrass juice okay so now we'll pray father i thank you god i thank you for this opportunity to talk with brother david and and to share with whoever's listening 
the your goodness, not just the the horror of this situation, because it is it is horrific. And we pray, Lord, that you will move in such a powerful way to expose this, and that American people will will say no. We won't do this. We won't go along with this. But even more than that, I pray that that you would stir the listeners here to 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 pray and seek your face, and to grow up into who they are, to know what their authority is. That we are all called to be soldiers in God's army. That you have seated us in heavenly places. We are not poor, helpless victims. We are victorious through the blood of Jesus. And this is this is our inheritance. This is we are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood. And so, Father, I pray that that there would be that you would rise up through us, stir us to pray about all of the issues in our nation, but especially this this issue of electronic warfare because it affects all of us, Lord. And that they would that we would all lift up targeted people who are suffering. And um, Father, I, I but I pray especially for those who are feeling so lonely and so broken and maybe just completely cut off from you and wondering how you could allow this atrocity to occur. I ask that you would comfort, bring comfort and rest and peace. And I just pray Psalm 91 over them that they would hide, that the targeted people listening would be able to hide under the shadow of your wings, Lord. And that you would brood over them like a mother hen broods over her chicks, Lord. And let them know that no matter what comes against them, you see everything. You are going to reveal. There's nothing hidden you will not reveal. And that you have a watchful eye on them. You are watching them and that you will, as they come before you, as they get in your word and they seek your face and they build their relationship with you. Jesus, as our as our bridegroom, our soon coming king and father, you, Lord, as our Abba Father who loves us and the Holy Spirit in them as their connection to God. He is our power source. Father, I pray that as they do that, that they will experience not just comfort, but an astounding sense of power and supernatural grace on the inside of their being. Because this is what this is all about. This is about living in resurrection life. I release resurrection life to the people listening. I release your blessings and your love and the sense of nearness and the urgency of the hour in which we live. But without fear, we are not to fear. But we are to be aware. And I thank you, Father, for this opportunity. Bless everyone that's listening in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. And thank you, Julia. So thank you. Very, very much. And I just want to say to all of our new listeners, if you would like a place to fellowship with some people that love you at 10 a.m. Sunday morning here on FOJC Radio. We do live streaming FOJC Radio Church. We would just welcome you and invite you to join us then. And we will be over this Saturday night at 10 on Now You See TV. Many of you join us there. And we just really appreciate, once again, all of you that pray and support our efforts in this and all of the other areas so with that we're just going to say god bless you all thank you so much for supporting us tonight we will see you sunday morning at 10 a.m on fojc radio church god bless you all and good night thank you for being a part of fojc radio church You can contact us at FOJC, Post Office Box 4174, Evansville, Indiana, 47724-4174. Or you can call us at area code 812-473-3735. Or you can email us at lastdayschurch at cs.com. Check out our website at www.fojcradio.com. And please join us again next Sunday morning at 10 a.m. Central Time. Thank you and God bless.